ggplot2 is an incredibly powerful tool to create beautiful visualizations, but you can make it even more powerful by adding the right extensions to it. And in this video, I'm going to show you my five favorite extensions for ggplot. So let's dive in. My favorite extension is ggtext. With ggplot, you can create basic text using a gm text layer. Inside, you can just determine some coordinates for where the text is supposed to be and a label and then make that label bold if you want to do that. You can also increase the font size and then you will have a bold text. With ggtext, you can make this much better by replacing the gm text layer with a gm rich text layer. Once you execute this, you will get a label instead of just the text. This is something you have to be aware of. But the important part is that you can now remove the bold text and instead make specific parts of your text bold if you want to do that. The way to make this work is to wrap the words that you want to make bold either into markdown notation or HTML notation. Here we can use the HTML notation to wrap one word into the B tags and then this word becomes bold. This kind of syntax gives you a lot of power about your text. For example, not only can you make specific parts of your text bold, for example, let's turn this one blue here. So let's write blue here and then we can replace the B tags with span tags. This means that we replace the B tags with span and then we have span tags, which are just inline code. So you just get regular text, but now you can add style instructions like setting the color to blue or the font size to say 20 points. And once you execute this, you will see that you have only changed a specific part of your text. This is a trick I use all the time to highlight specific points in my text that I want to highlight. Now let's move on to the second package, which is patchwork. With this package, you can easily combine all of the plots that you want. So let's just create two plots using the penguins data set. So let's create a plot that we call P1 and another plot that we call P2. If you execute all of this, you can see that P1 looks like this, it is a scatter plot and P2 looks like this, it is a violent plot. Now you may want to combine these two plots into one image. And with patchwork, it is that simple. You will have to either add them together. So put in P1 plus P2, which will put them side by side, or you can just divide them to stack them on top of each other. This package gives you a straightforward way to combine plots and there's lots more that this package can do. It can give you complex layouts and combine a list of plots or it put even tables into plots. If you want to learn more about Patchwork, check out the video that I've created about this. There should be a notification popping up right about now. And this reminds me, if you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button to tell me that you enjoyed this video. Thank you for that. And now let's get back to the video. Now the next package is really cool. It is GG pattern. It allows you to use all kinds of patterns inside of your GMs. For example, you could fill a bar with some cat images or some other image that you find online, or you could put in a color gradient, or you could use the same color gradient to fill the area below a line chart. To demonstrate this, let us create a new code chunk and in there put in a line chart. To do so, let us take a data set like the SP500 data set from the GT package. It gives you a data set about the opening prices at specific dates of the SP500. And then you can filter this to only use a subset of this data. And then you pass it to ggplot and use a regular area chart. This way you get a chart like this. Here I have used gm area instead of gm line because the area that is below the line, below the blue line that you see in this chart, this is the area that we're going to fill with GG pattern. For now though, let us make this a little bit nicer by adding a theme minimal, just so that we don't have the default look. And then we can throw in the stuff that we need to make the area below the line into a gradient. The way to make this work is to add a pattern, which is gradient in this case, and then determine the two colors that you want to use via pattern fill and pattern fill too. Of course, this requires you to not use GM area like we do now, but instead you should use GG pattern and from there use GM area pattern. And once you execute this, you will see that you get a nice line chart that has some gradient color below it. And the cool thing about GG pattern is that the names are very obvious. You can just use the regular GMs like GM area as we did here and then put an underscore pattern to it. And this will be the name where you can use a pattern inside of the GM. And for each GM, there are multiple patterns like gradient. For example, you could also use GM image which I use to create a waffle chart inside of my data visualization course. If you want to find more information about this course, you can look into the description of this video and there a link will lead you to that video course. 
Now moving on to the next package, let us look at ggForce. This package has so many different kinds of utility functions, which makes it hard to pinpoint what the exact goal of this package is, but it has a lot of useful functions inside of it. For example, there's GMR bar, which can help you to create pie charts, donut charts, or sunburst plot. And I have documented this inside of another video where the link to this should be popping up right about now. Or you can also check the description of this video. But here I want to show you a different thing that GG4s can do, which is really neat and which I haven't shown on YouTube yet. So let's create a scatter plot to demonstrate what I mean. To create the scatter plot, we'll just use the penguins data set from before, and then we'll just pass this to ggplot and put in a gm point layer, and we also throw in fd minimal. So that's our basic scatter plot that we want to use. And now we can highlight certain points by drawing an ellipse around a specific set of points. And then once we have that, we can even throw a nice label on top of that. The way this works is to use geomark ellipse from ggforce. And then to create the ellipse that highlights the points that we want, we have to use a different data set. Namely, we will use the penguins data set, but filter it according to some arbitrary conditions that we want to highlight. And once you execute this, you will get an ellipse that highlights the specific points that we have indicated via the filter condition here. But of course, there's much more we can do. We can modify the aesthetics. For example, we can add a label as I've just said. So let's put in some coordinates for this label. Then we actually need to specify the label. And if we execute this, we'll get a nice pointer that will point at this ellipse that we draw around the highlighted points. As is often the case, you can modify all kinds of stuff. But for now, let me just show you that you can modify the fill color of the ellipse by setting fill to some color. This will give you a lot of red color. So let's make this a little bit more transparent. And that way we have a nicer highlight of the points that we want. One of the reasons why I appreciate this function is because it gives you this pointer here and it's just a nice pointer and you can focus your reader onto the part that you want to highlight. It's really easy that way and this is one of the things I used inside of my data visualization course to create a scatter plot about Taylor Swift where I highlight certain points inside of that scatter plot. I believe this specific lecture of the video course is actually available for free if you want to have a little preview. You can find the link to that video in the description of this video. Finally, let me mention one more tool package that allows you to create bump charts that you see here. It would be a bit too much to show you how this bump chart is created in this video, but I have another video that walks you through all of the code. So let me just refer to that video. You can find it in the description or via the link that should pop up right about now. Really what I want to stress here is that the GG bump package allows you to create bump charts like this, which are great ways to show rankings over time. And one of the things that I like to combine with GG bump that makes this chart make really cool is GG highlight. This is another package. You can think of this as a little bonus trick here that allows you to highlight specific parts of your charts really easily by just adding the GG highlight layer to the chart. And then you just specify like in the deployer filter call what you want to highlight. In this case, I want to highlight all of the things that correspond to United Kingdom. And if I execute this, you will see that I get a bunch of errors, which are annoying. The chart still works the same, but there are some labels in there which I don't need. So let's set use direct label to false. And once you have that, you have a really cool visual that focuses on one specific country. And with that, we have covered not five, but actually six ggplot extensions that make your life much easier when you want to create insightful visualizations. You can find all of the resources that I mentioned in this video in the description of this video. And also there's a blog post to this video, which includes all of the code that I have shown you here. So feel free to check out one of these videos next. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.